Hey guys, welcome to 212 Kids, or should I say, welcome fellow astronauts. Yes, that's right, welcome to the void that is outer space. We're actually launching something new here the entire month here at 212 Kids, and I am over the moon about it. <laughs> Dad joke, sorry, yes. But this month, guys, we're finding out what it means to have initiative, right? And here's what initiative is. Here's what we're calling it. It's seeing what needs to be done and doing it. And when you take initiative, that means that you are ready for launch. Yes, that's right. You've made up your mind and now you've decided here's what needs to be done. And you're always on the lookout for things that you can do and then you do them. That's right. You see some dirty dishes on the table? Don't wait for someone else to pick them up. Take the initiative and go and grab those, right? Little bro having trouble with his math? Don't wait for mom and dad to get home. If you know how to do it, why don't you go over and offer to explain and help him understand? Guys, that's what initiative is. And we're gonna have a great time today looking at the Bible with an amazing story that talks about how we can have initiative and how something that was broken needed to be fixed and the person in the story doesn't wait but takes that initiative. But before we get to that, let's get into some praise and worship with Simone. Are you ready? Let's go. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. to show
That was great, guys. As I said earlier, this month we're talking about initiative, and it's seeing what needs to be done and doing it. Well, we can find one of the greatest examples of initiative in the whole Bible when we look at a story about a man named Nehemiah. Now, our story takes place in the time when God's people kept turning away from God, and eventually God allowed other enemies to come in and take over. Now, they stayed in this captivity that they were in for a long time, 70 years. But after 70 years, God's people were allowed to return home to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. Others had made lies for themselves in the Babylonian Empire where they were taken, which had now been taken over by the Persian Empire. Well, one Jewish man named Nehemiah had become quite important in Persia. Nehemiah was actually the cupbearer for the king, King Ataxerxes. Say that three times fast. Well, this meant that he was kind of like a bodyguard to the king. He would actually taste the king's drink first to make sure that it wasn't poisoned. That means that Nehemiah was very close and a very trusted advisor to the king. And even though Nehemiah lived in Persia, he still cared very much about his hometown of Jerusalem, which is where his people had lived before. Well, when Nehemiah's brother Hananiah returned from a trip to Judah, Nehemiah asked him about the people and the city of Jerusalem. And this is what Hananiah reported. It's in Nehemiah chapter one, verse three. Here's what it says. Some of the people who returned are still alive. They are back in the land of Judah, but they are having a hard time. They are ashamed. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down. Its gates have been burned with fire. That doesn't sound good, does it? The city was in ruins. The wall that was around the city was broken down. And in those days, cities needed walls to protect them from attackers. Well, Nehemiah was so upset that he actually sat down and wept. It was awful. The people of Jerusalem had nothing to protect them. So Nehemiah prayed to God. And here's what his prayer was in Nehemiah 1, verses 5 and 6. It says this, Lord, you are the God of heaven. You are a great and wonderful God. Please pay careful attention to my prayer. See how your people are suffering. Please listen to me. I'm praying to you day and night. I'm praying for the people of Israel. See, Nehemiah told God the truth. That, that he knew that God's people had sinned. They hadn't obeyed the laws that God had given them. They hadn't followed him very well. But Nehemiah also remembered the promise that God had made to Moses. That if the people obeyed God's commands, God would gather them together again. Well, one day, the king noticed that Nehemiah looked sad. And he said to Nehemiah, why are you looking so sad? Well, Nehemiah replied, the city where my people of, are from, from long ago, has been burned and destroyed, and a fire has burned up its gates. Well, listen, the king loved and cared about Nehemiah so much that he agreed that Nehemiah could take a journey to Jerusalem. Well, before he left, Nehemiah asked the king for letters that he could give to the governors west of the Euphrates River. And those letters would let everyone know that Nehemiah was allowed to travel safely. He also asked the king for a letter to, to the keeper of the royal park so that he could have logs for rebuilding. Well, the king gave Nehemiah those letters and sent an army officer with him to keep him safe. The king could see that Nehemiah was really upset and he was determined to help his people. The king gave Nehemiah everything that he needed in order to journey to Jerusalem and to rebuild the city's walls. Well, when Nehemiah reached Jerusalem, he set out during the night with a few others to see the damage of the walls for himself. And it was so much worse than Nehemiah could have imagined. The city walls were like a pile of rubble, and he knew that something had to be done. But he didn't wait for someone else to do it. He took the initiative. Nehemiah called out to the officials. Here's what he said in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17. He said this, you can see the trouble that we're in. Jerusalem has been destroyed. Fire has burned up its gates. Come on, let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. The people won't be ashamed anymore. God will help us, he said. And then what do you say? 
Man, as you can imagine, the officials were so excited, they decided to join him in rebuilding the walls. And the rest of the people in Jerusalem got on board too. They believed that they could do it with Nehemiah leading the way and God helping them every step of the way. Well, God moved the hearts of the officials and the people to help Nehemiah and together they began the gigantic job of rebuilding the gates and the walls of Jerusalem. Can you imagine what it would have been like for the people who lived in Jerusalem, right? Before Nehemiah came to town, they must have thought that rebuilding the city walls around them was pretty much impossible. But all it took was one person having the initiative and helping them to understand and imagine what they could do together. Nehemiah didn't wait for someone else to take the initiative or take action. He made a plan. He reminded the people of something important, and he knew that they could trust God no matter what. They could rely on God to help them accomplish this big job because they knew that God was with them. And you can take the initiative just like Nehemiah did. And that's actually our bottom line today. It's this, don't wait for someone else to do what needs to be done. When you see something that's not right or you see somebody that needs your help, man, don't hope that someone else comes by. Jump right into action. Ask God to help you and lend a hand. And guys, let's do this. Let's stop and pray that God will help us to actually do that, to take the initiative when we see something that needs to be done. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the truth of your word as we always do, God. And we thank you for that Nehemiah understood that he needed to take initiative when he saw that the walls were destroyed. God, I pray that you'll help us to have that same initiative that Nehemiah did, that when we see someone in trouble or we see some work that needs to be done, that God, we don't wait for someone else, but we know that we can trust you to help us to get it done. We thank you for this, God, in Jesus' name, amen. Oh, there, I'm MC Haggis, the world's greatest Scottish rapper. And this year is my beatboxing partner, Seamus McFamous. Say hi to him, Seamus. Okay, all right. Hey. All right, all right, get back to work, get back to work. So, this month we're learning about initiative, seeing what needs to be done, and doing it. And right now, whoo! Seamus is taking some publicity photos for me because I've been nominated for Scottish Rapper of the Year. <laughs> Other Scottish rappers who have won this award are Mick Eminem, Lil Kilt, and the glorious B.A.G. Pipes. Word is, I'm the front runner this year, so these pictures are important. <laughs> Seamus, what are you doing? You're getting in the way of the vibe here. Come on, go back there and start taking pictures. What are you, what are you doing? What, no, no, you're blocking my light. You're either, either with me or you're against me. Why are you making an impression of an iguana biting a fly? What are you doing? What are you, brushing, you're brushing your teeth? What are you, no, don't put your finger near my mouth. What are you doing? Aye. Aye. Your, your teeth. Aye. Your teeth? Aye. My teeth. Aye. What, what, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you talking about? <gasps> wait a minute. There's spinach in my teeth? Uh, Seamus, is this why you were to? Oh, oh, there's a lot. It's mm, mm, that's good. Is that what you were trying to tell me this entire time? Hi. Oh, thank you so much, Seamus. You know what? You saw what needed to be done, and you did it, and you told me. Uh, thank you so much. Let's rap about it. Kick it. A quality we need to help us live is one that is most determinative. Whether weak or strong or sensitive, we all need to practice seeing what needs to be done and doing it, and that's called initiative. Word. <laughs> I can't thank you enough for telling me that I had spinach in my teeth. I know that couldn't have been easy, but you took the initiative. You took the initiative. Yeah. You took the initiative. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and as we know, there's nothing more embarrassing than food in your teeth, am I right? All right. Here we go. All right, let's take some more pictures, all right? Hey, look at me. Oh, um, what are you doing? You're, you're, st what, what? you're not taking any pictures. No, what, what are you doing? Stop it, stop it. What are you doing? What's wrong with you? Do I got more spinach in my teeth?
Well, guys, I don't know about you, but I want to be like Nehemiah when there's work to be done. I want to look around and see something that needs to be done or someone that's in trouble or someone that needs my help, and I want to be brave enough to do something about it. You see, each one of us are going to come across all kinds of situations every day, and we'll find big ways and small ways that we can take the initiative and lend a helping hand. And we know that with God with us, we can do big things because of him. And think about Jesus. Think about how he took the initiative to help, right? When Jesus saw a need, he did something about it. He was always going around healing people and helping people and teaching people. And he took the greatest initiative when he decided to die on the cross for our sins. Guys, remember our bottom line today. We don't want to wait for someone else to do what needs to be done. For Nehemiah, all it took was hearing about the broken down walls of Jerusalem, and he found a way to get there for himself. Then he rallied the officials and, and the people, and they rebuilt the walls. Guys, what does initiative look like for you and me? Well, maybe at home, it's you see that trash that needs to be taken out, right? Or you might even think to yourself, man, that's gross, but you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. I, I, you know, we maybe see someone that needs help with math or needs help cleaning up their room. And we say, man, I hope someone else comes by. No, we want to take the initiative and jump in and do it ourselves. Guys, our memory verse today reminds us what it means to take the initiative. It's found in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. It says this, work at everything you do with all your heart. Work as if you are working for the Lord. Wow. That really changes the way you look at things, doesn't it? That if you really work as if God is the one that you're working for, that means that you're doing your best. And listen, we want to live every day with that kind of initiative. Well, guys, that's it for this week. Man, I hope you have a great week, and I hope you will join us next week here at 212 Kids because we have an awesome month in store. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, be sure to click here to watch another episode of 212 Kids and click here to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes.